pork would be his contribution to the Southern cause. That's why he did it, because he felt guilty that he did not fight in the Civil War on the Southern side. Okay, we'll see if we can get this one. This one's a little tougher, but I'm counting on Caleb. Who was Nancy Bushrod, and how was she involved with President Lincoln the morning of the assassination? You'd have to think of the video to get this. Who was Nancy Bushrod, and what did she have to do with Lincoln the, uh, the morning he was assassinated? Anybody remember that? Go ahead there, Izzy. She was a slave who was going to Lincoln. Emancipated slave. Emancipated slave who was going to That's exactly right. She was an emancipated slave who went to President Lincoln because her husband was not receiving his paychecks for serving in the Union Army. Okay, there you go. So Nancy Bushrod was an emancipated slave that went to President Lincoln because her husband was not receiving his paychecks for serving in the Union Army. Very good. Hey, Regan, my man, what position did Frederick Seward serve in President Lincoln's cabinet at the time of the assassination? Uh, what position did Frederick Seward serve in President Lincoln's cabinet at the time of the assassination? What was he? Uh, he right, so that means he was the temporary... William Seward, which, which what was William Seward's position? Secretary of State. So he was the temporary Secretary of State. Frederick Seward. He's the guy that got hit with over the head with a pistol, right, by Lewis Powell. Okay, and his father, William Seward, had a carriage accident, was bedridden. So he was the temporary Secretary of State. Okay, Dylan. Who were the two guests that accepted the invitation from President and Mrs. Lincoln to attend the play performance at Ford's Theater on April 14, 1865? Who were the two that accepted? Oh yeah, okay. Let me throw you a bone here. Who, who was it? What? Who was with... See, here's, here's what you never say, especially after I say, make sure you have your stuff ready for Monday. You don't say, oh, that was the day I was gone, which tells me, hmm, you must not have went and got on the website like you're supposed to. Self-incrimination. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, that might be done. That's, he's thinking. Who was it, anybody? Major Henry Rathbone and his fiancée, Clara Harris. Very good. Okay. Okay, Miss Zimmerman. Save this one especially for you and your partner there. Who was Laura Keene and what two things did she do concerning the events of the evening of April 14, 1865? First of all, who was she? Okay, and what she actually did three things, according to the video I had one. What did she do that night of significance? She brought water to President Lincoln. That a girl. That's what I was looking for. She actually stood on stage and tried to calm down the crowd. Then she took up water to President Lincoln when it was asked for. Then she actually cradled his head while they were giving him the water, which resulted in blood on her dress and her cuffs. So you're going to need to know two of those three things. First of all, she tried to calm the crowd on stage after it happened. Secondly, she brought water up to Lincoln. And thirdly, she held his head while they administered assistance to him. Very good. No, but just have two of them. Okay. Kaylin, my dear, who was John Parker? What did he have to do with the Lincoln assassination? And what new job did he get following the assassination? First of all, who was John Parker? Who is John Parker? <laughs> okay, he was in Dallas? Dallas. I'm on 
He's a, he was a DC police officer. That's the first right part. What was his job during the assassination? What was he supposed to be doing that time? Anybody? Go ahead, Regan. He's guarding the presidential box. And what job did he end up having, Adriana, at the end? He was Mrs. Lincoln's personal bodyguard. Yeah, he's Mrs. Lincoln's personal bodyguard. So who was he? D.C. police officer. What was his position in the assassination? He was supposed to guard the presidential box. What job did he eventually end up with? Thank you. He was bodyguard for Mrs. Lincoln. Okay, Caleb Frazier. Who was Henry Hawk? And what did he have to do with the Lincoln assassination? Uh, he was the actor that performed the funniest line in the play. He was the lead actor for the male? Yeah. Okay, and he did what? Uh, you were right, I was just adding the first part. Uh, so he was a lead actor, male actor in the play who performed the funniest part. Go ahead. Which was the significance of the funniest part of the play? took a week out of my class and you're not just popping this answer and that What do you do, Regan? Uh, wait, what is the significance of what is what? Well, well, to tell me, answer the whole question. Who is, who is uh, Harry Hawk and what did he have to do with the Lincoln assassination? So he said the funniest line when they really loud. So that? So he stop so that he wouldn't be heard. Okay, so he and she and whatnot. Henry Hawk was a lead male act, actor in the play who performed the funniest line in the play, allowing Booth to enter the presidential box and shoot President Lincoln. Very good. Jonathan, who is Charles Leal, and what did he have to do with the Lincoln assassination? Who is Charles Leal, and what did he have to do with the assassination? Bailey, help him out. Okay, the answer, that's a good part of an answer. He was the doctor that first cared for Lincoln after the assassination. He was the first doctor that cared for President Lincoln after the assassination. You know, that's a nice bit of information. Thank you, Bailey. You don't really have to write down the 45 days. Just say he was the doctor who first tended to President Lincoln after the assassination, but that was good. Okay, Jonathan. Who made the following statement after President Lincoln was pronounced dead? Quote, now he belongs to the ages. Who made that statement? Stanton, what? Right? Secretary of War Edwin Stanton is the correct answer. Mackenzie, my dear, how much was the reward the federal government was offering for the capture of John Wilkes Booth after the assassination of Lincoln? How much reward was offered and money in those days. Right on top of a great big poster. One hundred thousand. I even put a dollar sign for those of you who can't seem to remember that. Okay? One hundred thousand dollars. The video said ten thousand. I couldn't believe it. That was obviously not right. Okay, let's see where we're at here. Aisha, tell me which conspirators were present during the attempt on the life of Secretary of State William Seward. Which two conspirators were present during the attempt? One held horses and the other one stabbed and stabbed and stabbed and tried to shoot people and hit them over the head with a gun barrel or gun butt and what's that? Who were the two that were at Secretary of State Seward's? Uh, Lewis Powell and Lewis Powell is correct. David Harold. Yep. Lewis Powell and David Harold. Izzy, who is Fanny? Uh, she was Frederick's sister. Okay. <coughs> Very good. Perfect. Fanny was Frederick Seward's sister, William Seward's daughter, who came out and screamed seeing the events of Lewis Powell pounding her brother over the head with his butt of his pistol. Very good. Carter, who silenced John Wilkes Booth for life at the Garrett Farmhouse Barn in Virginia on April 23, 1865? 
Boston Corbett. Very good. I'm looking for a quote here. Direct quote. And I'll tell you exactly what I want. See how you do. Jordy, why did President Andrew Johnson refuse the recommendation of the Military Commission concerning the hanging of Mary Surratt? Quote. He gave a reason. Quote. Why did he refuse the recommendation of life sentence of Sue Hank? She very good. She kept the nest that hatched the egg. Exactly what I want. She kept the nest that hatched the egg. She kept the nest that hatched the egg. Okay, Andy. Which of the conspirators was pardoned? after his wife personally received the pardon from President Andrew Johnson at the White House? Samuel Mudd. Very good, yes. His wife received a letter that I have the pardon ready for you. I would like you to come to the White House. I'd like to sign the pardon in front of you, and then you can take it and pardon your husband. That was Dr. Samuel Mudd. Yep, very good. Dr. Samuel Mudd. Okay, Danny. Which of the conspirators was found guilty and sentenced to six years in prison for aiding Booth in his escape from Ford's theater by slapping a man witnessing Booth's escape. Edward Spangler. Very good. Edward Spangler. Very good. Sage, which of the conspirators was tried and released as a result of a hung jury more than two years after the Lincoln assassination? Who was the conspirator that was tried and released as a result of a hung jury more than two years after the Lincoln assassination? Last one caught. His mother hung because of it. Yeah, John Surratt Jr. Very good. Dylan? What profession did this conspirator, John Surratt Jr., eventually make his career? What was he? Got married, had seven children, turned out to be what? A lowly... A lowly, lowly what? What was his profession? Can't teach anything. Maybe he could have. Huh? Maybe. But you don't know what he... Okay. Always, always. He was a teacher. Yeah, very much. He was a teacher. John Surratt Jr. Okay, I'm looking for another quote, Daniel. How did Confederate Joe Johnston sum up the death of Abraham Lincoln when he received word of the president's assassination? How did Confederate General Joe Johnston sum up? The death of Abraham Lincoln when he heard, he heard word that the president had been assassinated. Quote. You'd hate to you'd hate to lose your best friend over this, not being able to get this. Who is your best friend? Daniel. Yeah, Who is your best oh, friend? I got, I got quite. Yeah, well, how, you wouldn't hate to lose him if you didn't get this right. We lost our best friend. We lost our best friend. We lost our best friend. There's a quote. Okay? There are 30 answers to this. They will be worth four points apiece. So the test will be worth 120 and we'll have it tomorrow. Now, Wednesday, it's my plan to do this, is to go ahead and register for register you all for that ACT test. Okay? And so all you have to do is kind of bring yourself. Although, bring your three ring binders, I guess, because I want to give you the test back and you put them in there. So, we'll bring three ring binders. I will supply the pencils and we'll register for the ACT on Wednesday. Then, kiddos, here's the deal. i got to get through reconstruction before I go to D.C. and we've got a spring break in the middle of that. So, we are going to be moving and grooving so we can get through the next test material before I go. Okay? So, there's the plan. You should be ready to roll. So let's see, we got this week of school, then next week of school, then spring break, and then I got one more week before I go. So we got three weeks of instruction. I want to make sure I get to a certain point. Yes, dear? 
It is being recorded right now. And thanks for reminding me, I'll turn it off while it's downloaded.